Today's dreamer is a 44-year-old male who works as a translator and as a poet, and he offers this title to his dream, Velvet Darkness and the Big Dog. I can already tell he's, he's a poet and a writer. It's a great title. <laughs> I'm walking in the streets of a small town I grew up near. It is a completely dark and moonless night. There are no street lights and no lights in the windows of the house. It is also very quiet. I can't hear any human life at all. I feel like something terrible may happen. I feel myself near the evangelical church my family attended when I was a child. I try to enter the side door which leads to the church basement. It's locked and I can't get in. While fiddling with the handle, I begin to hear panting and clicking toenails of a very large dog walking in the street close by. I can't see it because of the darkness, and I sense the dog getting closer to me. It starts to growl deeply. I'm very frightened, and I wake up. And he writes about the dream. I had this dream after having become interested in dreams again, mostly because of listening to your podcast. I kept a dream journal for many years, but had fallen out of the habit in the past five years or so. I've also begun devoting more time to my spiritual life, which I neglected for many years, and perhaps even rejected because of the negative associations of my childhood. The main feelings in the dream, he writes, early on in the dream, curiosity in the soft darkness. Later on, frustration at the locked door, and then fear of the big dog. And then he offers a few personal associations. The darkness I associate with a velvety mystery, not frightening, almost comforting. Regarding the dog, I am really more of a cat person, and I can be skittish mm -hmm. around big dogs, though I usually have a good rapport with them once we warm up to each other. As for the church, it's complicated. My associations with the church of my childhood are very negative. Fear, humiliation, and coercion. My childhood experiences caused me to reject religion quite violently as a teenager. However, throughout my adult life, I've been interested in and dabbling in a wide range of spiritual ideas and practices, though they have all been very far from evangelical Christianity, at least ostensibly. Mm. So this is one of those dreams where I had a sort of uh, download about what I thought it might be about. <laughs> um, so the big dog is a powerful archetypal symbol. And, and a lot of times on the podcast, we talk about, oh, animals, instinctual energy, you know, man's best friend, this kind of thing. We talked about dogs quite a bit in dreams. We could do a whole episode on dogs and dreams, by the way. But this is a big dog that comes in the night. And one of the other things that's true about dogs is they guard the realm between the living and the dead. So uh, in Greek mythology, there's the dog, the three-headed dog Cerberus, who guards the border, line, the border between uh, this world and the next. And in uh, uh, Egyptian mythology, there's the dog-headed god Anubis, who also oversees uh, part of the transition from life to death. So, uh, you know, there's a sense that it, it carries this kind of archetypal charge of uh, mortality, I want to say. And, and there's a sense of kind of being hunted by, by something. Um, there's that wonderful poem, is it called the the Hound of God? Um, I'll have to I'll have to look for it. But uh, yeah, Deb, you look like you might know what I'm talking about. But it but it's a sense of uh, um, well, I do want to find that poem actually because here's what I suspect is the man is trying to get into the church. 
he says, oh, the velvety darkness is comforting, it's beautiful and everything. But he also says he has a feeling that something terrible may have happened. So that feeling of dread was missing from his report on feelings, but it was certainly in the dream text. And he goes to the church to see if he can find some comfort or solace there. You know, I mean, it's sort of like, why are you trying to get into the church basement? That would be an interesting question to ask him if he were here. But, but not knowing that, I assume, you know, kind of looking for safety, the church of his childhood does not offer that. He is being confronted with the archetypal reality of mortality. I think he's being confronted with an invitation to engage in spirituality, knowing that he cannot revert to the religion of his childhood. So I'm going to go off and find, I think it's called The Hound of Hell, and, um, and I want to hear what you guys have to say. I'm always, um, I generally have a positive spin uh, on things. So uh, I, I tend to want to think of the growling dog as something that's helpful. And having been a dog owner on and off through most of my life, dogs growl for many different reasons. Mm-hmm. For all we know, the dog is actually at his side growling at something that is on the other side of the door in the evangelical church, that the dog is an ally, but he can't in the moment perceive that because he doesn't generally think of that being an ally. But if I was, when I was walking my dogs, they would stop in their tracks, and if there was something they were smelling or seeing that they thought was a threat to me, mm. they, were, they were down and ready. Uh, mm-hmm. to protect. So we could say, well, maybe the dog was growling at him. Maybe it was growling to protect him. Maybe it's also showing him that he needs to growl. He needs to know <laughs> something about how to growl, which if it's an aggressive growl, that's a way of warning other animals that I mean business. So it's a way of, of posturing often to avoid an altercation, but Mm -hmm. to display a capacity for aggression if need be. Mm -hmm. So it may be that as he is in the town, in the velvety darkness, and and meandering into the basement of the church, it may be that the unconscious is saying, you can't walk back into your church complex until you learn how to growl, until you (laughs) learn how to hold your aggression and snarl a little bit in case something tries to hurt you. I have a a somewhat different but aligned um, Mm -hmm. take on this stream. So I think we're all looking at the same thing from, you know, sort of different angles, like if we're all in a circle. um, I see from 2 o'clock and you see from 10 o'clock and somebody else sees it from 6 o'clock. I think this is a really important dream. Yeah, I do too. For this dreamer. I think very, so too. very, very important. Uh, so I, um, especially because the dreamer says that he's become interested in dreams again uh, and has been devoting more time to his spiritual life. Yep. And, and that. Um, this is about his relationship with the transpersonal. I agree. And and uh, there he is. There are no street lights. It's all dark. He says in the dream, I feel like something terrible may have happened. And our dream ego does the only thing in the dream that he can think of to do, which is he's near the evangelical church. Mm -hmm. Uh, which was a scary place for him. But it's the refuge he knows because this dream takes place in his childhood complex, which is the streets of the town near where he grew up as a child. And then we have this clicking toenails and, and big dog. Dogs traverse the realm 
uh, between wildlife, the wildlife of the wolf, from which they presumably evolved, or animals like that, uh, into you know the the flip side of that, which is they became quote man's best friend unquote. So your point about the dog of we don't really know what the dog's growl means is well taken. And your point, Lisa, about the dog as Cerberus, the three-headed dog that um, uh, became even more famous with the Harry Potter uh, stories. Uh, What is this thing? It has archetypal power. Uh, And he's caught, in a way, between a rock and a hard place. Does he, he can't take refuge in the old evangelical church, which seems to the dream ego like, like a logical place to go. Uh, and he doesn't want to stand outside in the street where this uh, monstrous dog might be lurking. So we don't have a conclusion yet here with this dream. Something big is in process, I think, in this dreamer's psyche about his relationship to the transpersonal and where are the positive, welcoming, beneficent aspects of the transpersonal for him. Yeah, I mean, it's a real confrontation. And uh, just Mm -hmm. building out my original thesis, I guess, a little bit, the name of that poem is The Hound of Heaven, not The Hound of Hell. I don't know what I was Ah. thinking. Uh, but it, it's a it's a really um, it's by Francis Thompson. It's from 1859, and it's um, it's a long poem. Not even, I'm not going to read anywhere near the whole thing. But it um, it it's uh, Joseph Campbell uses this poem in Hero with a Thousand Faces to talk about the refusal of the call. But it, it but it's an it's ah. a it's an explicitly um, religious poem. And it starts out, I fled him down the nights and down the days. I fled him down the arches of the years. Ah. I fled him down the labyrinthine ways of my own mind and in the midst of tears. I hid from him and under running laughter and on and on and on. And then, you know, at the end, it's it's this dog that is chasing him and chasing him and chasing him. Mm-hmm. And and then at the end, he... he um lets himself be caught in essence and it's uh the the dog is is an image for uh the transpersonal for god actually it's i think it's a catholic mm-hmm. poem you know so so you know i try to avoid my kind of date with the destiny of uh claiming this religious life but finally i couldn't resist it anymore so um i i wonder this this uh dream made me think of that poem Thank you.